day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. So back to the weight, lift the weights and stuff. He said, labor not for the meat which perished. Amen. But for that yeah. which endures, Beth, they, they're their life again, eternal life again, Elder, which endures <sighs> unto eternal everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give, back to Jesus again, shall give mm -hmm. it for, for him has God the Father sealed. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you know the beauty of this. It, it, you get back to the eternal. Okay. I, I come at some point with Chuck Norris, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. uh, the Van Dam, yeah, and uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Come on now. And these guys, you know, the muscle mass of these dudes and the physique of these guys really was impressive. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, man, I wish I could be like that. Uh -huh. But what I find out now, nah, even they ain't like that. They're not. They're no not and there's absolutely nothing they can do to bring that back in <laughs> the flesh. There's nothing in the flesh. And, and 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 to be honest, they weren't like that then. That is makeup. Oh really? Yeah, it had a lot to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Makeup made them look as cut as they were. Yeah. Okay. But and, it was, and, my line was perishing stuff though. That's perishing what, stuff. Yeah. The, yeah. the perish it was perishing. Yes, yeah. man, that was, that's something. And, and even now, at this point, and I don't think we could have convinced them prior to that, but at some point in their lives, their hearts have been dealt with to the point, and this might have been where that soil has become conditioned to the point where they can receive the gospel because they know that all they sought for at this point is diminished. Yeah. And that no matter how hard they're working, they're doing the Botox, they're doing the, the plastic surgery, they're still working out. But everything that they're doing is not working for them to sustain that place that they were in before. Exactly. So God allows us to pay to some of those things that we thought were so important. And then we see this this ain't it. This just really ain't it. And then the gospel can, can take root. The gospel has to take root. Yeah. That's the yeah, I look at you, people like Bill Cosby. Look at yeah. I mean, Calvin ain't trying to sit there and do anything about Calvin because I still like him. I, I think he was a positive influence on the, on the secular world, uh, especially among blacks because he gave us a different image of ourselves and some of us lived up to it. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, him as a person, you know, he he, 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 he did not prove be preached to. Can he not be witnessed to? Yeah. You know, this guy had heights. He, he reached some, some lofty places and the world system brought him low. Can he be preached to? Can he be ministered to now? You know what? I would say that it, based on his defiance, that the world has not brought him low. They may have put yeah. him in. His heart is not saying he's low. I'm just saying, right? He's defying up to this point. He's saying, I didn't do it. I am not going to confess I did it. And if you want to keep me here for 10 years, that's what you're going to do? That's fine. I am not confessing. Yeah. Yes. But they really, they really defamed. They, they purposefully defamed him. Someone did. It'd be yeah, a good time for him to really see the truth. Did you notice that when he was starting to talk about that, there was, you know, I don't know if you remember, Brother Asa, he was talking about us. As, as yeah, we remember that. Yeah. What we need to fix. And then some of these, some of the other uh, so called leaders of the, uh, I guess, of the, what you might call them, leaders, said, You're airing our dirty laundry. He said, oh, Excuse me, did y'all not know that your laundry, did, did anybody have any question of where your laundry was at? <laughs> But they, that's what I'm saying. He was he was going after uh, trying to get a, a TV, uh, one of the networks. Yeah, he was getting yeah. that proud the purchase network. He was moving it toward that wealth, that power, and uh, and uh, think, in that influence. I think it, he saw our culture as being, and I have instances of yeah, uh, relapses in that myself. I, this, the subculture itself was taking it was falling back. To me, it was it was regressing instead of progressing as a whole. And uh, you all was speaking last week, uh, two weeks ago, about the diversity of the culture itself. Right. That you could not paint all of us with the same brush. Yes, sir. I had, uh, and I and I have a tendency to do that. 
And because I, I realized at one point the society itself ain't was all with the same brush. As, as far as my awareness was concerned. And we were all treated similarly so. Right. So and I and I you know, you gain an affinity for the people that you're part of and you wanna see them progress. And what I saw was the progression that was truthful and, and lasting and eternal was that progression that we made toward the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, as a matter of fact, we need to close the bishop before our brother has to go. I guess you got to go. You want to say what, what, uh, y'all got any, uh, I'll, I said last week, I said you want to go to another parable. Uh, did you get everything you need from this parable? Uh, we'll never get everything we need from it, but did, uh, we want to focus on another parable for next week. What? Yeah. Huh? Brother Jackson. I really kind of hate that he wasn't here because he missed out on a lot of this. So. Yeah, he was here earlier though. Can you send him? The, can you give him? Give him the raw version of this? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because I, I sent you out that text and said the only thing about these just being sensitive for the, you know, like homosexuality and stuff like that. And I'm gonna cut this out. Uh, is the part about this? People got people like that in their life and we need to be sensitive to that. And I still think the answer is that we preach the answer. I think Brother Ashby said it earlier, preach the answer. Yeah. That's that's the key. It's 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 not to me ostracizing. It's it's preaching the answer. Well listen uh, uh the evangelist will tell you. The evangelist will tell you. Yeah. The, the people who understand the evangelism, they understand the need to get people to understand the problem first. Let me tell you what I mean. Now, my, my friend the evangelist said, when you read the when you read Jesus' uh, discourse for the woman at the well, what Jesus is doing, all of his efforts. And everything that he's doing with the woman, he's trying to get her lost. Hmm. He's trying exactly. to help her understand. In spite of all you think you know, you uh -huh. all you hear you, you lost. You lost. Yeah, recognize you're lost. Right. Because only lost people can appreciate the answer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. But he said, he said he's been in over 50 different nations. If you ever hear that Negro preach, you're like, now that's, that's somebody that's called. Uh -huh. But he says he's got one fundamental principle. He understands that the gospel is for lost people, it's for perishing people. You gotta get people to understand that they're perishing. The scripture said, for God so loved the world, he gave yes, a lonely God to who should believe in him should not perish. Right. He said, that back don't mean nothing to you if you don't think you're perishing. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's like, the, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That don't mean nothing to you unless you know you're lost. Yes, sir. Come on now. So he got a simple principle. Get them lost first. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I realized they lost. The elder gave, the elder gave that one. I didn't realize they're lost. They're being found. Look real attracted to them. <laughs> elder had that look. You got that, Elder? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely had that. I, and and uh, that was part of the question that I asked initially, and I think uh, we had some response to, was to what point do we publish the the uh, the, 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 the death, the, uh, the, the, the abnormalities, the, the things that are not of God. Right. And uh, when we talked about what's, what's eternal, you know, we talked about that initially, and then we talked about those things that enhance your know, human existence and so forth and so on. And if I'm participating in any of those things, then that's the indication that I'm lost. Yeah, you know, my behavior is going to be an indication of that lostness. But to what extent are we preaching that in the evangelical, uh, 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 I mean, evangelism uh, uh, environment? And and, and 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 again, I have to, on a personal note, to be critical. Uh, what I'm finding out for me at this point is the solution is very important because I think that life in itself. It's helping them to see that they're lost. And, and that's important. And at some point, somebody has to identify it to them. You, you see what I'm saying? It's like, oh, and that's I, I want, 
but I think that the, the life's experience is, is designed for that. If, if a person never heard anything about sin in this life, and lived from the beginning to the end of this life, they would realize something didn't go right. There would be a, there was there's like a lack of satisfaction, there's a lack of joy, there's a lack of joy. Like even with, with Bishop, when Bishop said he, he got everything that he wanted, as far as money and position and that kind of thing is concerned, but he feel like there was still something missing. Right. I believe for a lot of people that is going to occur. That's I right. believe that, that that homosexuality is a hype for a lot of children because it's a fad. And so they're moving through this faddish kind of a relationship, but they're gonna find it to be an unrewarding relationship. I think they already know. I think people know, but the thing is that when I think what what I always been cautious of for you guys is that the when when we when we try to pin them down, right? And don't pin everybody you know, down. Pin a, don't pin sin down. Like I said, we, we use the example of the woman of the well, right? He was showing it, help her to find out that she's lost, right? That she needed a savior. She needed she needed another way, right? So so a fornicator. We're talking to you too. <laughs> We're talking to you. You that got unforgiveness. We're talking to you that that uh, that is a homosexual. We are talking to you that is an adulterer, because all of that stuff they see, and they're yeah. trying to say, "What is the answer?" You you too busy focus on what I am, not even understand I can't. I, I think I'm I'm fixed and locked in to be who I am. You're saying is you me, Bishop. We ain't we ain't, we're not who we are until we are whole in Christ Jesus. And legit, and, and, and I think that that's that's like that that's the that's, that's the cornerstone of it. That's the cornerstone of the conversation. Is, is that regardless of how you think you are, if you don't have Christ, you're not whole. You're not whole. And something in your life is going to manifest. That. Exactly. There's going to be some indication in your life, whether you're the executive or the CEO with with a wife and 15 kids and faithful to their wife if you don't have christ you still are not whole and not. something in that scenario is going to begin to disclose that to you exactly. i mean i've known guys that have wonderful wives come on now wonderful yeah. wives and she did on them yeah. and then she's on it like man having a good wife don't mean nothing to you it wasn't because because he wouldn't hold in christ come on now <laughs> why was going to help him whole then you're sick yeah, he was sick. He was sick. The guy, the, 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 and the, vice versa, women got great husbands, but they cheat on them because yeah. they're not whole in Christ. Yeah. So we we see all manifestations of sin come as a result of that rent that occurred in the garden. Exactly. Exactly. And, and until that rent is repaired, you are accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord in your life, and the restorer of the breach and reconciling that faith and relationship between you and God, you're going to be broke. And you're gonna manifest broke stuff around you. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking the good came to mind when you said that was uh Prince Charles married Diana. He cheated with and and, and, and I don't mean I, I don't mean how if this ever gets to that lady, but you better edit that. You're not you're not <laughs> Diana. <laughs> Parker Bowles. I said, Bishop, you you you're not Diana. You you how did I don't know Charles Oh uh, Lord this i don't know I, I could could i wouldn't pick it but you know he did camilla parker bowles <laughs> he was married too i think he was she... married too yeah. he had a beautiful wife forgiven of children oh we're talking Prince about charles. Prince charles and diana and and uh what's that other camilla, name? camilla parker bowles well i think his name was camilla parker bowles i know it was parker bowles but i can't remember uh the first name was I mean, I mean, come on, man. I mean, he did, he, he'd have to see her. He didn't, he can't, he can't identify. I don't know what she looked like. <laughs> yeah, she, well, yeah, she had a different kind of beauty. <laughs> this, man, this, man had, this man had wealth as a been a, a, a next king and yep. beautiful woman, two sons, and he went somewhere else. Yeah, I think they probably had a relationship before he married Diana, though. I think, well, I think they did, but yeah. yeah. 
I guess she couldn't give him what he needed to do for the do uh, the for the heirs. Yeah, for the heirs, right, right. And uh, but it's it's just it's just weird. And then here's a good example. Remember those weddings? Both been like, what? Those are ultimate weddings of a woman want to have, right? Yeah. She wasn't. Yeah. She found out she wasn't complete. Yeah. Atlanta wasn't complete. Even though they had that. What's the girl? The girl that's, that's married now. Oh, yeah, that looked like a great, great, great wedding. Look how, look, man, I, woo, I had a great, one of the biggest weddings in, in, in yeah. history. Oh. Walk that away is, from them broken, still, still not whole. That wasn't complete. See what I'm saying? In yeah. that, like a lot of cases, we focus on too much of the trying to pinpoint a particular uh, lifestyle and not the answer to the life. They already know. <laughs> they already know it. Hey, before I go, Bishop, I want to say I want to throw the two guys is that you ever notice that in the very early stage of our life, depending on the type of parents you have, every, I bet every last one of y'all can remember when you start going to kindergarten or, or, or pre, you know, the uh, pre, or school, elementary school, how when you were raised by your parents, they were encouraging you. Now, I ain't talking about all good parents. I ain't talking about all bad parents. I'm talking about good parents. They encourage you, right? You know, like if you drew a picture, they, they, they'll say, oh, that's a nice looking picture. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful, right? And yeah. then, then, then you go into the world. In early stages of life, you go to kindergarten or you go to the first grade and, and, and you, you show, you'll show your picture. Look at my, look at my picture, right? What that kid, what that little kid gonna say? <laughs> that is ugly. <laughs> what is that ugly little thing you just drew? What is that? In, in other words, Bishop, they get early stages of life. There's this demeaning of a person's identity. And a lot of kids go through that. It's, it's this part of life of how to put people down and post to where well, you yeah, at least loving parents. Remember, they always the encourager. There was always the one you can go to. If everybody else put you down, they were there. And, and, and I think, again, uh, Pastor Taylor, I think that that's even necessary. I yeah. think you got to have your policy, you got to have your pharmacy. You got to have the folks that come against you that point out your flaws, and then you got to have the ones that encourage you past them. And those are the things that kind of move us forward in the, in the faith, because the same Sammy Smith that was preaching from that pulpit, his wife and another mother from the church came to the house to get me off the couch and drunk. So we had both of these elements working in the same church, and the only thing I can think about is the fruition of the, of the, of the scenario was that I got delivered from my house. Yeah, yeah. Instead of the effectiveness of it is that I'm sitting here today Alcohol free. You, you see what I'm saying? Alcoholic free. Right. right. And cigarette smoking. That's 37 years ago. Yeah. Jesus. So I've seen that method working. I've seen God employ that kind of process through other people. Might not be through the same individual. Might not be the one that nurtures you and, 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 and also, you know, corrects you. Might not be the same person, but he gets that information to you. And I, and I think it's him. I really think it's him that does it. Well, I think, um, yeah, but I guess yeah, I want to tell you. Was, you are a pastor and you have a pastor's heart. So you would be a lot more lenient with people being jacked up. Because if you weren't, up, you wouldn't yes. be a pastor. I mean, pastors have to deal with jacked up people every day. Yeah. Evangelists, uh, I, I guess I, I could say even apostles, because Paul was not a lenient fellow. Right. Paul was definitely not lenient. When, when he, he, don't make me come down there and do something to y'all. <laughs> I'm saying, oh, you don't want to find me out like that. But uh, he had a hard line. Right. He could tell from his previous life how much of a hard liner he was. He was killing these people. He was having people <laughs> So he didn't go after whatever it was with a, with a soft hand. He would have, don't send him over here the morning. God left us the first time. He can't go with me. Yeah. So he was that kind of guy. But then there was Barnabas on the other hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, man, you know, I got it, I got it. Man. I hit up with me. So I think we inherently, because of our upbringing, the way we were raised, you know, sometimes, have a different tent on 
life period. Yeah. My, my approach might be a little softer depending on who my upbringing was through. You right, know? right. But I think God uses us in our individual places from our different perspectives to, to work the the whole picture of the gospel, yes. right? And yes. Yeah. Gives like five, four ministries. Exactly. He and remember, each one of them is given, I think, a different heart or a different spirit to yeah. deal with that individual and individual. Hey, look, I like matter of fact, what thought came to my mind was, Bishop, the uh, the shepherd left the ninety nine and went after the one that was lost. Yep. I mean, I'm just showing that that was the same concept. Is he, he Bishop said that. You want to show somebody they lost, then you go get them. They went at them. They went at them. Now, come on. And that's the whole point in trying to reach out. So, y'all got anything y'all want next week? Yes, sir, you want it? Because I'm thinking about that Good Samaritan, because that's another one that is, once again, it's kind of that, that person that was uh, on that road was broken. Life broke that person. But what we saw was, and I guess you call them lost, hurt, injured, not whole, ill. You know, the person was left on the side of the road. And then we saw these three different people approach the yeah. different. That's about along the same lines I was I was thinking, but I was wanting to expand it to the, uh, the ministry itself, the five-fold ministry that yeah. he talked about. Yeah. Because he said he giveth I mean, apostles, you know, preachers, mm -hmm. teachers, so forth, so evangelists. He does that. What I would like to be able to examine if we could, and I know it might be a little bit to study, is what kind of hearts or approaches are observed in these different areas of ministry. Yeah. You know, yeah. what does a pastor's heart or manifestation look in comparison to an evangelist mm. or, or a teacher or a preacher? You know what I'm saying? And one yeah. thing that really gives me that thing, right? yeah, yeah, discipleship. But they all work together to bring them to the fullness of Christ. Mm. That's the word, right? Yeah. That yeah. we're all working from a different perspective to bring the disciples to the fullness of Christ. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to do that because we want to, because that's how we're trying to do that. If people need understanding, right? They need to understand how to become whole. Yes. What is the purpose of the perfecting of the saints, the <laughs> equipping of the saints? Yeah, you're right. And it, and and that we said some earlier that I think would be helpful to the body is that we understand who we are in the perspective that we're coming from and how it is that we God is leading us to approach the person. What and it might change from time to time. You know, the preacher might be a teacher one day, the pastor might be a preacher, and maybe there's more than one role. But what what spirit is working to include these people on the norm when when they manifest those 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 uh, callings? Yeah. Hey, Vincent, so the question is, what are we sending out? We're equipping them. What are we equipping people? What's the work of the ministry? What are they doing? Because I think, Vincent, that's the, are they the ones that will be doing the discipleship? And, and what are we sending out from the congregation? What, 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 we, what are we sending out? You're sending out the only thing we can send out. What? You can that we reproduce after our own kind. Yeah, and that's the problem. That becomes the issue. <laughs> that becomes the issue. You can't and, say and, I, and I'm not, that's not a critique. That's just a reality. We're yeah. growing. Yeah, whatever. As a body of believers, we are growing. I mean, a, a, a pecan seed can't produce peanuts. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's just the nature of it. You can only produce after your kind. And that's what Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees. You are making, you're making twofold child of hell. You're making people twice as hell as you are. Yeah. Woo! And, 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 and that can apply to some of us in this day and age as well. Exactly. Uh, so we really can. What is the big deal uh, to that then? So it won't be a, um, the CTI is not all for just parables, correct? CIT? CITs, they're not for all, they're not just parables out there. Well, I, I just thought it's out there because once you, once you go down the road of wholeness, you're on the road of discipleship. And so it'll be interesting if you understand wholeness, then you under, you need to understand what is Jesus talking about in Luke 9.23? 9.23, uh-huh. 
Matthew 8 34 Mark 8 35 uh, and you know, Matthew 24 16 all three of those verses say the same thing do we look at three is is the recipe uh-huh for wholeness okay why we look at that then that's 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 no that's just something to throw out there that you so you can kind of see you you, you kind of look at this thing now about about wholeness and, and discipleship did you really understand the discipleship how does g what does jesus give us so that we can have some idea of what the path to wholeness look like well, we gotta put people on it yes sir right I think because they, when you receive christ you, you're made whole mm -hmm. you got no knowledge of your wholeness exactly right that's a problem see you got it you got a half million dollars in the bank and you don't understand this idea of 75 with a cup to my i work for my is also i gotta tell you sir, excuse me do, do you realize that that you your parents left you a half million dollars down there around there from credit union. All you gotta do is go down there. It's your money. Yeah. Yeah. You know how to access it? You need to know how to make withdrawal from it. Come on now. That's find to be. That's it. Greatest failure. That they is. They don't teach the discipleship, and then they don't teach people how to access it. Yeah. How to be able to walk in it. Exactly. Those are the type of things we wanna get people to, to, to know if they're not teaching it in the maybe they look bishop maybe because they, they the time of the service they don't have a they can't they don't they can't focus on that you know well, well I think because our, our our services and all that we do to what the service to our Lord has so been distorted that we don't uh we miss the objective Program. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the objective of all that we do is to cause other people to become disciples to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the objective. The the the, the, the church anniversary don't help. <laughs> the yeah. pastor's anniversary birthday party don't don't really get to that point. Uh, there's a lot of things that we do uh, within the confines of that environment that has nothing to do with causing an individual to become more dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ in Nazareth. Jesus has become a part of the mix and not the focus. They shouldn't even be church without Jesus. <laughs> if you, if yeah. you see what I'm saying, without yeah. him being the focal point, there's no reason for us congregating. Yeah. We can have clubs outside the, 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 the confines of what we call the church. There are all kinds of clubs out there you can join. You can join the, the, the golf club, club or whatever it is, but don't come to church or don't teach people to come to church to congregate. Yeah. Just congregate, but teach them to come to know Jesus, to experience Christ. Yeah. And, and, and But we've gotten away from that. And, yeah. and I understand why, because we as a subculture didn't really have a social environment aside from the church. So we cho chose the body, I mean, the, the, that, that environment, that institution to become our all in all. It was our nightclub. It was our, it was our, it was our school we master. Transported it. Did we transport it? That was to we everything. Transport. We didn't have we didn't have these things available to us as a subculture initially. Listen. And we trans everything we wanted in life, we, we put in the church. Woo! <laughs> and we brought the hierarchy of the world system into the church. Woo! We brought the the, the, the hum where most of our R and B singers come out of the church. It wasn't because R and B got in there. I mean, they brought R and B into the church. They brought R and B out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the guys was, they were singing in the choirs before they were singing in the nightclub. Yeah. So. It, it, it has been for us as a people the focal point of our lives, except we lost sight of Christ in the middle of that focus. Well, and, and we're, and we're having to go back. We're having to go back and put him in the throne again. Yeah. Well, Bishop said, 